Welcome to Autopsy of a Bad Scene. George Lucas's original Star Wars trilogy is widely considered to be one of the greatest film franchises in history. Episodes 4 through 6 of Star Wars tell the incredible hero's journey of Luke Skywalker and his mission to save the galaxy from the evil Emperor and his own father, Darth Vader. Episodes 1 through 3, which came out several years after the original trilogy had finished, told the story of how Anakin Skywalker portrayed the Jedi and established the Empire. The original trilogy is very well loved, and the prequels, while facing some criticism, are more or less liked. The sequel trilogy, well, that's another matter. Star Wars fans are very torn about whether episodes 7 through 9, which were created by Disney instead of George Lucas, are actually good or not. There are several reasons for this which are beyond the scope of this video, but there is a particular scene in The Force Awakens that illustrates some of the problems people have with the films. Electrical overload. I can fix that. Coolant's leaking. Try transferring auxiliary power to secondary, secondary tank. tank. I got it. Chewie, come on! Mm. <laughs> I need help with this giant hairy thing! Stop moving! You hurt Chewie, you're gonna deal with me! For him? He almost killed me six times! Which is fine! This hyperdrive blows are gonna be pieces of us in three different systems. What'd you do? I bypassed the compressor. First off, I dislike the use of the word bypass here. That makes it sound as if Ray used some sort of computer system finagling to stop the compressor instead of simply ripping a piece of equipment out, wires and all. Second, as several people have pointed out in numerous memes, removing a piece of equipment from off of a ship mid-flight seems like a pretty bad idea. I'm no mechanic, so I can't explain exactly how that would pan out in real life, but it seems rather counterintuitive to me. Third, this scene feels really off from a character standpoint. The scene seems to display Ray's knowledge of ships, which is plausible given her background. The issue I have here is that the scene is doing this by basically having her show up Han in his own ship, but there isn't an established relationship between these characters for it to work off of. If you're going to have a new character show up a pre-existing character, or a younger character show up an older one, you really need to have a strong bond between the characters, or else the newer or younger character just comes across as obnoxious. To explain my problem with this, I am going to look at a completely different film as a counterexample. In the movie Aquila and the Bee, when Aquila first visits Dr. Larrabee, her spelling bee coach, she is rude and obnoxious. First thing most serious spellers do is learn all of the winning words and their origins. Well, maybe I ain't that serious. Maybe neither am I. So why are you home doing today? Ain't you got a job? Do me a favor. Leave the ghetto talk outside, all right? Ghetto talk? I don't talk ghetto. Mm, ain't you got no job? You use that language to fit in with your friends. Here, you will speak properly or you won't speak at all. Understood? Yeah. Whatever. You can leave now. Excuse me? I said you can leave. How come? Because I don't have time to waste on insolent little girls. Insolent? I ain't ins... I mean, I'm not insolent. It's just the first thing you do is start dogging on... ...criticizing the way I speak. I thought this was just about spelling words. Well, then fine. You know what? When I put my mind to it, I can memorize anything. And I don't need help from a dictatorial, truculent, supercilious gardener. I'm sorry to be so insolent. Akila is clearly intelligent, but her attitude leaves a lot to be desired. Later, she messes up a word during the District B and is almost eliminated from the state competition. Accordingly, she goes back to Dr. Larrabee's house, apologizes, 
and agrees to work on his terms. The two develop something of a father-daughter bond since Aquila's own father died when she was little. Near the end of Aquila's training for the National Bee, she and Dr. Larrabee get into an argument. Why did you cancel yesterday? Hmm? Were you doing another interview, flaunting yourself in front of the television cameras? No, I was at the mall. Look, I wasn't dissing you. I was Christmas shopping. Dissing? I thought we didn't use words like that. I thought we only used words from the dictionary in here. Dis, dist, dising, to treat with disrespect or contempt to find fault with. New words get added to the dictionary every year. Now, why does this scene work while Ray and Han's scene doesn't? Because we've already got an established relationship between Aquila and Dr. Larrabee that has developed over the entire course of the movie. We've seen Aquila grow and learn from Dr. Larrabee, so when she finally puts him in his place, it feels as if she has truly earned that moment. Conversely, at this point in The Force Awakens, We've only known Ray for about 40 minutes of a film that is over two hours long and is part one of a trilogy. Moreover, Han and Ray have known each other for about 10 minutes of screen time. Thus, Ray demonstrating competence at a moment when Han doesn't this early in the story just does not come across as earned, especially since Han is a pre-existing and well-loved character from the original trilogy. If Han were a new character to the story and was shown to be a jerk who was bullying or second-guessing Rey, this could have worked, but we've already seen Han have his own arc in the original films, so that doesn't work. This isn't endearing us to Rey, it's just annoying and it feeds the interpretation of Rey as a Mary Sue type. I know some would argue that this scene isn't at Han's expense, but it definitely feels that way to a lot of people, not just me. And if over half your audience feels a certain way about a scene when you didn't intend them to, it is not because your audience is stupid, it is because you didn't do your job right. Personally, I think it was intentionally at Han's expense, but that's me. Finally, my last problem with this scene is probably my biggest one. What is the purpose of this scene? Was it to display Ray's competence? Well, aside from the mechanical question I brought up earlier, I feel like there were better ways to accomplish that. It especially feels off because they're showing her skills at Han's expense. Is it just meant to be funny? I admit the part with Finn and Chewbacca is pretty funny, but Rey and Solo, not so much unless you're into memes. Seriously, you could remove this scene and it does nothing for the plot. Nor does it deepen the relationship between these characters, nor does it tell us anything about them that we didn't already know or could have learned about in better ways. It's just pointless. So that's it. Thanks for watching. God bless.